All right, Carrie, are you ready to do the demo? Sure. Yeah, I can. I can share my screen. All right, cool. So I just wanted to show a little bit about how you can use a YCC data value schema to generate an open API doc that you can use in many different ways. You can use it for documentation for your uh, API. You can use it to um, deploy a package in your cap controller CR. Um, it's a way to just declaratively state what is allowed in your um, configuration as inputs. So uh, let me just start out from the beginning. We need to talk about what a data value schema is before we can get into an open API document created from a data value schema. So on the left here, we have a data value schema you can tell because it's got this annotation at the top. It's got some schema annotations in it. If you're using YTT right now and using data values, you might be more familiar with a data values file, which might look like this. So it's got comments in it to describe things. Um, it declares values um, in line. So some of the differences here are in a data value schema, it provides not only like the values themselves as defaults, but also type information. So for example, for your load balancer enabled, this value is defaulted to true, but it also provides type information. So this must be a Boolean. So if you're a configuration author, you use a data value schema, your configuration consumers must include that information using the correct types. So like, for example, if we're going to use this, we've got uh, this value file, schema file, and then just like a simple template here. I'll show you what that looks like. It really just outputs the data values. So if we run that, it should work. And it's going to be all the defaults in your schema uh, overlaid with the values included in your data values file, right? So enabled was overridden to false because that's allowed, it's a Boolean. Um, for arrays, you can declare defaults in your schema here. And any values included in your data values file will be added, right? So it's added up here. Uh, one of the benefits here is if you are totally messing up and you accidentally put something that is not a boolean here, you try to run this again, you're gonna see an error that actually prevents this from being templated. Um, so it'll catch things uh, before you deploy them. All right, so we're gonna to totally forget about this values file um, and only gonna use the schema because really that's all that's needed to create an open API document. So um, these fields here, um, they can create open API keys. So for example, this can provide us documentation when reading your schema, so you know what this means, but it also will include a description key in your open API schema that has this string. Um, the schema nullable will allow this value to be either a string or it can be null. And you'll see that reflected in your open API schema. So like, let's see what that looks like. All right, we're gonna take our schema file and we're gonna run it through this command in YTT, data value schema inspect dash O for output. And it's gonna be an open API v3 format. And we're just gonna write it to a file. All right, so this was created. So this is what the open API document looks like that YTG just made from your data values schema. And you can see 
everything under components, schemas, data values, everything in here is the actual schema for your values. Um, everything above that is uh, like header information that's used by uh, like any other third party open API tools that you need. This just makes this valid open API. So if you wanted to like, I don't know, generate uh, HTML or documentation based on this schema, then you'll know it's in open API 3.0 format. Um, and then just, yeah, to highlight this, like for example, load balance without enabled, it's a Boolean and it defaults to true. You can see that right here, or uh, sorry, right here. Yep, so it contains all of the type information that's in your data value schema and any comments as descriptions, right? Um, right, so this can be used in a cat controller package. That's one of the use cases that it, it supports. And you might do that by having a package custom resource as a YTT template, for example. And say you wanna put your uh, open API schema in this open API v3 field. This acts like documentation for what values are allowed in your package. That, for example, like this package will um, fetch your configuration from an image and then template it using YTT. Uh, you can add values here and you can read this open API v3 section to know what values you can put in your templates here. Um, so, what we got here is just this key. Let me show you the command we're gonna run to make this make a little bit more sense. So we're going to just template this package and we're going to include our open API document as a data values file. And we're gonna name it open API and include that file as that data value. So that's what this is here. It's going to take that open API key and it's going to get the component schemas data values out of it. Right? So if you remember, that's everything down here. Um, and then this is necessary because uh, when reading from the command line, it's going to read it in as a string. So we just need to convert that into YAML so that we can access these fields. All right, so let's template this and see what we get. Yep, we get our package out and it's got all of our schema here. So then we can deploy this and use it for uh, our configuration. Um, so that's really like the main use case that I wanted to go over today. The open API schema can be used for other things as well. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions about that.